If you've read my Uncle Eric book called Whatever Happened to Justice, you know that the human ecology is vastly more complex than a rainforest or a tropical reef. And yet, for more than a century, politicians and bureaucrats have operated on the assumption that they are God and they know how to improve it. So, they wrecked it. I'm sure that if we gave federal economists control of the Amazon rainforest, it would never occur to them to just leave it alone. The first thing they do is set up the official Amazon Federal Reserve and start arguing about the formulas they'd use every six weeks to loosen or tighten the supply of water. And a hundred years later, the Amazon rainforest would be a lifeless desert, two million square miles of sand. The most complex thing ever discovered is the human brain and the economy, the human ecology, is comprised of 6.8 billion of those brains. So, does Obama understand that the economy is an ecology? Well, just listen to the terminology he uses. These are his actual words. He has said, the economy has structural problems. It's locked up. It's out of balance. It's sluggish. It's frozen. It's slow. It's clogged up. The man thinks he's a plumber. The next topic Obama and the mainstream press seem not to understand is economic models. All mechanical engineers and architects use Newtonian physics. Cars, ships, trains, skyscrapers, it's all built on Newtonian physics because Newtonian physics has been proved, proven right billions of times. So for most of what we do every day, Newtonian physics is the model. No engineer or architect would for one minute consider using anything else. Well, economic students in college are led to think there is just one model in economics, too. But there isn't. There are five main models. The Keynesian, Monetarist, Socialist, Fascist, and Austrian. And there is no consensus about which one is correct. Yet every financial analysis, every investment recommendation, begins with a choice of economic models. It cannot be avoided. Whether he knows it or not, the analyst is using some kind of economics to do the analysis because all financial work builds upward from economics, meaning from the study of the human ecology. Economics is the foundation. I would like to see the whole financial industry, including every article or book you read, disclose under the name of the writer the economic model the writer is using so that the audience can tell what the bias is. In my own case, the article would show the title then by Richard Mayberry, comma, Austrian. An article by John Doe would say by John Doe, comma, Keynesian or monetarist or whatever. When I was in college, we were never told what model we were being taught. In one course, the professor would be a monetarist, in another, a socialist, in another, a Keynesian, and they never disclosed it. So most of us didn't even know there were different models. Ever since, I've talked with college students and found this has not changed. I almost never run across a student who even knows there are different models so they come out of college thoroughly confused. To them, the human ecology is a huge mystery. They've been taught a mass of contradictions and they think there must be something wrong with them personally. Their brains are defective because they can't make sense of it. Several times I've had people with college degrees in economics read my little book Whatever Happened to Penny Candy, which is written to be easily understood by a 12-year-old, and these people have told me that for the first time in their lives, they understand economics. I use the Austrian model, 
which is the one that most closely dovetails with the beliefs of Thomas Jefferson and the other American founders, the Austrian is the only one that sees the economy as an ecology, not a machine. As far as I know, I've one of, I'm one of the very few people in the country who ever disclose their model, um, you know, because I'm proud of my model. As for Obama, I'm sure his confusion comes from the fact that he doesn't know or is only vaguely aware that there are various models and he doesn't know how they differ. If someone asked him which economic model do you think makes the most sense and why, I'm sure he'd have no answer. So the result in the White House is confusion. It cannot be any other way when the advisors have different models of how the world works. The third topic Obama and the mainstream press apparently know nothing about is velocity and money demand. Jim Powell has pointed out that the tens of millions of people who are still working, and that's 91.5% of the workforce, have received a huge pay raise because prices of houses, cars, refrigerators, and a lot of other things have been cut drastically. The buying power of their wages has soared. And it's the best kind of pay raise because they didn't need to work any harder to get it and it's not taxed. This is a huge windfall. It's probably the biggest, most widely shared windfall in all of world history. So why aren't these tens of millions of people out celebrating? They should be delirious with joy. Why aren't we seeing dancing in the streets? because people are scared and afraid to spend the money. And that brings us to what economists call velocity. As this war was developing during the 1990s, I repeatedly warned that it was likely to bring a dollar crisis and advised my readers to always have part of their savings diversified into non-dollar assets such as Swiss francs, New Zealand dollars, uh, gold, silver, platinum, oil, and other raw materials. Incidentally, in March on our website, I ran a special bulletin telling my readers that I think there is an 85% probability the bottom in non-dollar assets has occurred or is occurring, and I think those investment suggestions are now as solid as they were 10 years ago. A major reason is velocity. As far as I know, my early warning report is the only publication that says much about it. I think velocity has become the key driver in the entire worldwide economic crisis, so here is a quick explanation of it. Money responds to the law of supply and demand just as everything else does. If people do not want a particular currency, let's say the British pound, then the value of a pound will fall. Sellers will demand more pounds in trade for their goods or services, and prices in Britain will rise even if there has been no change in the supply of pounds. 